Okay, so this is I, what I did. I picked up one uh, long question from Cashflow. What you expect in exam is like you may get some short questions and you may also get long questions. So I picked up a long question because one long question, it may have, you know, when you do a long question, actually you become skillful in doing short questions of cash flow as well. So what they have given, like I told you yesterday, that in order to prepare a cash flow statement, what you need to have, you need to have two balance sheets, like 2007, 2008, and you need one income statement, which is given at the bottom. So one year income statement and two years balance sheet. So they've given us this data. Um, particularly, there is no need to read these financial statements as such immediately. You would just be spending your time. We know that our beginning assets and closing assets and, you know, beginning inventories and closing inventories, we'll calculate them later when we need it. What you need to read before you start is about the notes. Because notes, these are the adjustments which give you a starting point how to do it. So we'll read it together. It will take us something like 30, 40 minutes uh, in preparing this thing, but let's start making it. So it says that during 2008, uh, which is the current year, amortization of $60,000 was charged on development projects. So which means you may have some intangible assets development and you charge $60,000 amortization. You remember that depreciation amortization we add back. We have to prepare, they ask us, prepare a statement of cash flows uh, using indirect method. So when we start using indirect method, we start with profit before tax and then we say add back depreciation. So this is kind of going there. During 2008, items of property, plant, and equipment with a carrying amount of 103 were sold for 110. So there is some gain on disposal. I will tell you what to do with that, but you sold. So this is going out and you receive cash 110,000. So this is going to be shown in our you know, investing inflows, 110,000. Profit on sale was netted off against other expenses. Uh, I really do not need it. I just know that there is a profit on sale and I know that cash came in 110. Depreciation charge in the year on property, plant, and equipment was 57,000. The Kinson acquired 56,000 of PPE by means of leases. Uh, payments being made in arrears on the last day of each accounting period. Okay. Uh, the current asset investments are government bonds and management this has decided to class them as cash and cash equivalent. So this is going to be our cash and cash equivalent, which is on current assets and government bonds. The new debentures were issued on 1st April 2007. Uh, finance cost includes debenture interest and lease finance charges only. We will discuss this also when the time comes. And during the year, Dickinson made a one for eight bonus issue, uh, capitalizing its retained earnings, followed by right issue. Um, that thing I'm not really concerned about because it's a bonus issue. And when you make a bonus issue, you do not get any cash. So we'll see what to do with that. Okay. Anyhow, the starting point, usually in cash flow statement, as I tell you that these uh, notes will tell you where to start with. And it's very obvious, note one and note two is about non-current assets. And you always need to make some support workings for purchases of equipment. Like if I see from here that you have property plant equipment 737 and that it increased to 925. So you definitely purchase something. But the question is that how much did you purchase? So that is your you know, investing outflow. Um, of course, the difference is not what you purchase because there was some depreciation, there was some disposal. So you need to take account of all the depreciation and disposals and revaluations, et cetera, and then find out how much you actually spent cash on purchasing them. So usually we start out working one with you know, non-current assets because this is usually a, a serious working here. So what we need to do that we will see that we have two years. You have your opening balance and you have your closing balance. And you can write down here 2008 and you can write down here 2007 or allow me to write down 2008 here and 2007 here. And uh, what is my opening balance? I start with my opening balance. My assets here were, for example, it says that you've got 737. And uh, okay, let me not make it in table form. Let me call it, this is my PPE. And this is, I can call it my you know intangible. Intangibles. My PPE had a balance of 737 and tangible had a balance of 160. I can see these two numbers from the 2007 balance sheet. But then what you did, you sold some asset. You had some, you know, uh, asset disposal. We go back and we see that what was the value of asset which we sold. It said that the value of asset which was sold was 103. So this was the balance sheet amount, carrying amount, carrying amount. So if it had been the historical cost, then I would not have subtracted because I'm taking here the netbook value. So I subtract the netbook value 103. This is what we have sold. Then I remember that there was some, you charge depreciation also. 57,000 and you purchase new assets for 56,000. So this 737 I started, uh, then I had depreciation. So if I had depreciation, 57, I depreciated. So this should also bring down the value of my asset. See, let me just show you, for example, if there is nothing else, so this should be my closing asset, for example, just for example, closing assets. Because 737 I started, this I sold, they have no more with me. So asset balance should decrease. This I am depreciating. So this also should go out, asset value should decrease. But then there is some purchases. You have some uh, purchase under lease, uh, lease purchase which is 56. So this is what your assets will become here. And then you have, if you pay attention here, you have a revaluation surplus, which means that you revalue some asset. Uh, did they give some note about that here? They told you that gain on revaluation of property, plant, equipment 100. So actually there was a revaluation gain. So my assets would increase with revaluation gain 100. Okay. So these are uh, the numbers. And when you will make a total of these numbers, for example, so it will come 733, 730, 733. Okay, let me delete it from here. There's a lot of gap. So this is my closing asset, but as per balance sheet, you will say that as per SOFP, how much do you have? You should be having 733. This is what you should be having if this is the only thing, but they told you that as for SOP, uh, SOFP, it was 925. Okay. 925. How much is the difference? So the difference is 730, um, 925 minus 733. It is 192. This is your addition. This is your cash addition. So this is the value of assets you have purchased during the year. Only then it becomes 925. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Now, similarly, if I go with my intangible assets, on intangible assets, they told you that they charge some development cost. 
So I can make a separate working for intangible here. Working to intangibles. My opening balance was 160. Then you have some amortization. Amortization should decrease your intangible asset. They, took, they gave you in the notes. They said that during 2008, amortization of 60,000 was charged. So this 60,000, I would subtract from here. So I, I subtract 60,000. So then how much might these assets should be? These assets should be 100. Closing should be. Actual on SOFP. How much is actual on SOFP? Okay. How much do you have? Intangible. You've got intangible to 90. So it means that the difference is your addition. This is what you spent. If I go by the books, if I go by the books, I had my opening intangible asset 160. I amortize 60. So my balance sheet closing value should be 100 here. I started with 160. I should be ending up with 100. But what you see on the balance sheet is 290. So the difference 190 is you call it that this is the addition which you have made during the year. Am I clear until, here until now? Yes or no? Hello? It's clear, sir. Okay. Then we need to do our working capital changes. If you remember that, we said that we will make in the operating segment your working capital thing. So working capital, what you have, in working capital, you always have this. You've got tables and you've got inventories. These three items we need. And we write down here just the opening balance. And we write down the closing balance. And we see the difference. How much is the difference? So if you go back to your current assets, in current assets, you have receivables. Your receivables are 324 and 274. So you, you write down your receivables as 324. And your closing receivables are 274, right? Uh, then you have your tables. Your trade tables are here, 352 and 274. So opening is 352, closing it 274 again. <clears throat> and then you have your inventories. And inventories were 227 and 360. 227 and 360. And I'll just make a difference of these two. And I will keep it here. And we are, we are going to use it when we will <clears throat> structure our financial statement. So we will be needing this number also. <clears throat> then you need to make one more adjustment for equity statement. You need to make an, uh, an adjustment for your equity. In equity, what do you have? In equity, usually you have share capital. And I'm going to write it down in the same, uh, same order. Share premium. You have got revaluation surplus. And you have got retained earnings. These are the four items in your equity thing. And you have your opening balance, which is on share capital. Uh, share capital opening balance is 400. Share premium is opening balance 100. Revaluation reserve was 60. And retained earnings were 255. So this was, this was your total equity. Let's check it. 815. Yes, it matches with here. 815. But then they told you that during the year, a uh, few things would happen. You always say opening balance, and then you say during the year, what happened during the year? Maybe you issued some new shares, you write down here. Maybe there is some share premium, you also write down there. Maybe there is some dividends given, you subtracted there, revaluation reserves, you add there. I know that there was a revaluation reserve. Right? So how much was your revaluation reserve? Your revaluation reserve was 100. It was given here. That revaluation reserve increased from 60 to 160. Okay? Then you have made some profit. Whatever profit you make, that profit also comes to the uh, retained earnings. Profit for the year. So I would say profit for the year. And that should be added under the retained earnings section 180. Then they told you that you issued some shares followed by right issue. So during the year, Dixon made <clears throat> a one for eight uh, bonus issue capitalizing its retained earning. What does that mean capitalizing retained earnings? Which means you are paying from retained earning. Capitalizing retained earning means that, you know, when you issue bonus share, normally when you issue share, your double entries, debit cash, credit share capital. This is the normal entry. But in case of bonus issue, you don't get cash. You put here share capital, share capital is increasing. So what do you do debit? It means that you make debit to retained earning, which means that you took money from retained earning for this new issue. This is called capitalizing retained earning. So when they say capitalizing retained earning, you, you do it like this, okay? So how much bonus issue you made? You made bonus issue one for eight. One for eight. So let's make some calculation for your uh, bonus issue. Is one for eight. So how many shares do we have in our equity? If you go back, you see that in your equity, you had uh, $400,000. One share is $1. So 400,000 shares you have. And 400,000 shares you divide with eight. So this is the value of shares which you are giving. So <clears throat> you have here bonus shares. They will increase your capital with 50. But this 50 which they will increase, where the money is coming from? It is not coming from cash. Because I just told you that you just made a debit to the retained earnings. Which means that share capital will increase and retained earnings will decrease. You put minus 50 here. Okay? Minus 50 you put here. And then, and then what happens? You made further new shares as well. Uh, so how much new shares you are issuing? Now, if you see until here, now there is no other uh, transaction. I had opening share capital 400. Then I issued bonus share. We had share premium. I don't know what would be the share premium because it said that. It says that. Please pay attention. It says that during the year, Dickinson made a one for eight bonus issue. So it is clear that you 400,000 divided by eight, 50,000 shares you issued as bonus. Capitalizing it's retained earning. Understand. Followed by a rights issue. That after this, you gave a right issue. But how much was the right issue? How many shares did you give in the right issue? That you do not know. 
they don't tell you that at what price did you sell them at premium and what was the premium and what is the number of shares we don't know but we can find it out ourselves <laughs> if you pay attention your share capital was 400 we write down 400 then you issued 50 more shares so it will become now if you see that it will become 450 it becomes 450 but in reality how much is there as per sofp how much is as per sofp as per financial statement you have here 500 okay let me uh put some lines there i have to keep some space and i will say this is 450 okay so this is what it should be but the thing is that on the balance sheet you can see that it is 500 on the balance sheet you've got 500 so it means that right issue in right issue i made the shares 50 that's why they, that's the balancing figure you should write down here balancing figure this is how you calculate because 400 you had 50 you issued until that i'm clear but it makes only 450 in reality the balance sheet says that it is 500 so it means that right issue was 50 dollars okay uh, am i clear okay then how much is on the share premium account 350 right so you had some new issue you had some new share premium so how much share premium so this right issue actually when you are issuing the new shares probably you're selling it at a high price and you collected 250 as dividend share premium 250 so this is also the balancing figure now it makes 350 then you have revaluation surplus 160 it makes the total when you make these two totals it makes 160 and which is same here 160 that is clear now the question is after retained earning <coughs> if you see the total of retained earning the total of retained earning comes out to be 385 right how much do you have here retained earnings it says only 229 it says only 229 so i must write down here 229 this is what they give us so it means that we gave some dividends we gave out some dividends and that's why it has decreased so how much dividends we have given out <clears throat> so i would do like this uh what is the number here if i do like this it should be 385 okay so i would say is equal to 385 minus 229 this is the dividend which we have given 156 <clears throat> is it clear and if you want to make a total you just put it minus 156 and you make a total of that it will give you the full amount this is 229 and now when you make a total of this thing, it gives you a closing number at 1239, which is the same as you have it there. Any question until here, please ask me. This was an important calculation. Uh, we need to see that how much dividend we are giving. So if we give out dividend, dividend paid, we should write it down in operating activities. If we issue new shares and we got some cash, we should put it as financing activities. So all of these numbers will be used. So if you have any questions from here, please ask me. If not, then I will start, I will move further. Okay, so this calculation is done. Then you have, okay, let me delete it. Then you need to make what else, what else? Working capital we made, uh, we need to make, uh, we took a lease, right? Uh, okay, I'll do, I'll do it for the lease also. I'll do it for the lease as well. Um, I think, yeah, we have some, what else working do we need? So debentures we are issuing, finance cost, this is my liability debenture. Uh, probably we need to do for that as well. This next note, debentures. So we'll say, I don't know, working number five, maybe we call it debentures and other liabilities. So all of the numbers in your financial statement, in your balance sheet, <clears throat> you are going to make adjustments. So what do you have on liabilities? Uh, except trade payable. Forget about trade payable because trade payable be <clears throat> already included in our working capital. So what you have uh, here, you've got your lease liability, what I see from here. Then you have your current tax. Then you have your, uh, you know, um, current tax you have, leases you have, uh, interest expense you have. And actually let me write it down from here so that I get some place and I got, okay. Current X. So I've got leases, current X, interest, and debentures, which we issued. So these are four types of liabilities which we have. And again, we'll start with that how much opening balance do we have for them? So you've got lease liability uh, of 12. Uh, lease liability of 12. Okay. And then we have current X, which is 153. Then you've got interest payable, which is not given. We need to calculate and debentures we need to calculate. How much debentures did we give? Let's read the question below, how much debenture we are giving. It says that, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> the new debentures were issued on 1st April. Okay, on 1st April we gave. So we see that the debentures here, there was no note. We only see from here that debenture interest is there, but debenture is in, in, in long-term liability. Okay, so debentures were, liability was 18. Okay, uh, okay, let's make it like this. Please pay attention. Ankit, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This lease liability, I just, I did not write it for it. Let me make it a little debentures. Uh, and uh, this lease liability I wrote twelve dollars. This is not correct because I just took lease liability under current liability, but lease also has non-current liability. So we should make a total of current and non-current. If you remember in leasing standard, your total liability is split between current and non-current. So we should write down here ninety-two dollars, the current portion and the non-current portion on the lease liability. Agree with me? Okay. So that is this much. The ventures you have one hundred. It is given here one hundred. And interest, how much do you have interest here? Nothing because interest expense was nothing here. We take it zero. Then what happens? Then you have during the year, what is happening? 
Did you pay some? What is your tax liability for this current year? They tell you, I told you that how to calculate tax paid. You said opening tax liability plus this year tax expense minus closing tax liability. So my opening tax liability is 153. This year tax is income tax expenses 162. So it means that this is how much it should be. And, and by the way, I do, do we have some non-current liability as deferred tax that we should also add? We have deferred tax also. So lucky we are, if we have to write down, don't call it current tax, just call it tax liability. I just made it. You should say it, your current tax was 153 plus your deferred tax was 45. So your total tax liability was 198, beginning of the year. During the year, it should be 162. And end of the year, when you made it, this should be your closing. This should be your closing. Three zero six. But how much do you see on the balance sheet? How much it is? On the balance sheet, your tax liability is 48 plus 56. Can you make a total 48 plus 56? How much it makes? 48 plus 56. Yes, 104. 104. So if opening liability plus purchases minus closing liability should be this much. So 104 it should be. So what is the difference? 360 minus 104. Can you tell me? 360 minus 104. 256. 256. So this is what you have paid. So now it becomes 104. So this is what you have paid in form of taxes. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So tax is clear. And if we see our now lease, it was 92 lease liability was given 80 plus 12, 92. And uh, then you got some new lease for 56. If you remember in the question, they told you that you got a new lease for 56,000. So it means my beginning liability was 92 in respect of leases. 56, it happened during the year. So my total liability should be somewhere 148. But how much do you see at the end of the year? How much do you see at the end of the year? Your lease liability 117. So it makes 117. Can you subtract 148 minus 117? 148 minus, one, 148 minus 100 minus 17. What is the answer? Hello? Okay. Okay, I'll do it. One forty-eight. I have and minus one hundred. Hello. This lease liability non-current and the current is seventeen minus seventeen. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. I'm getting. So it is thirty-one. Thirty-one. I paid in respect of leases. Thirty-one. I paid in respect of leases. And then you go back to your interest thing. Your interest has zero opening balance. Where is your interest? The venture interest is zero. And then closing balance is five. This is closing balance is five. But you paid something during the year. If you come back to your income statement, it says finance cost fifteen. So when you started, you did not have any interest liability. And during the year, your expense, interest expense is 15. So opening liability plus during the year minus closing. So my closing is just five. It means that $10 interest I've already paid. That's why it makes it five. Your interest expense is 15 and closing balance is five. That's how you do it. 15 was your during the year expense. So this is what you paid. And this is the balancing figure. These numbers we are just calculating ourselves. These numbers are not given. These are our balancing figures, okay? And this is your closing liability of interest. Then you have debentures, $100. And uh, what do we have here, debentures? The ventures you had 100 and it increased. This is your non-current liability. So you are receiving cash. It is 150. So here I put plus because you get cash. These numbers are minus because you have paid. This number is plus because it has increased. Your debenture liability has increased from 100 to 150. So $50 new debentures you issue. If you pay attention to your balance sheet, 100 to 150. So it means $50 you receive in respect of the ventures. This is your cash inflow. Are we clear until here? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Any question? Now we, our workings are... We have done our workings, and now it is time that we start doing our, you know, uh, cash flow statement. Let me make like this. I'll take these numbers there, so that we come in front of this thing, and we see how do we make it. If we need any numbers, we'll take them from there. And where should we start from? We start cash from, from operating activities. No profit before taxation. Yeah, not net profit before taxation. Yeah. So I'll call it statement of cash flows. And I'll start with profit before taxation, which is given to us uh, from income statement. How much was that? Profit before taxation was 342, if I see. So we start with 342. And if you remember last yesterday, we said that we'll say that, you know, adjustments we will make. We'll say that uh, adjustments before working capital. And those adjustments are, the first one is add back depreciation, add back amortization. So whatever depreciation and amortization we calculated, we have to add it back. And actually we did not calculate, they gave us a question. They told you that depreciation and amortization was, uh, depreciation was charged 57 and uh, amortization was also given somewhere. Amortization was 60, 60. So we add them back. We say that let's add back 57 depreciation and 60 amortization. Then you always said that add back interest expense. So how much was your interest expense? If you pay attention to the income statement, your interest expense was finance cost was 15. We said that because it is above that and we will subtract interest paid, how much we paid. But whatever is income statement, we add back. So I put here $15 as a plus. And then there is this adjustment, which is very interesting. Uh, very interesting. I did not explain it before because yesterday I was saying that there could be three transactions. There could be four, there could be five. This is what it could be. It said that 
during the year item of property was sold 103 was sold for 110 so actually there was a gain on disposal so 7000 was gain on disposal this 7000 gain on disposal is actually not an operating activity it is an investing thing and when you took your this 342 within this 342 you have this gain somewhere here and you have to subtract that thing so this gain on disposal you will say always that subtract gain on disposal do you understand the point what i'm doing Gain on disposal, we sold some asset. We had an asset with the value of 103. We sold it for 110. So 7,000 we made profit. That 7,000 profit is inside of this number, but it is not operating. So we just subtracted. So that's why we subtracted. If it had been loss on disposal, we should have carried them. So loss on disposal is added. Gain on disposal is subtracted. And I make this number total. And you always call it cash flow before working capital changes. This is the number one which we needed. Then we'll say adjustments for working capital. And you know that what is working capital. Working capital is receivables, payables, and inventories. If you want, we made one table below. You can go and check numbers from there as well. We made some calculation here for working capital, receivable, payable, and inventories. So your receivables were 324. Now your receivables have decreased. So if receivables are decreasing, it means that your cash should be more. So you should be adding this $50. Actually, don't pay attention to put this minus 50 because I just subtracted. If I do it from here to here, then it will be all correct. So receivables have uh, decreased, which means customers paid money. Customers paid money, that which means that we will have more cash. Then you come to payables. Your payables are decreasing which means that you are paying money to your suppliers, you will have less cash. If you talk about inventories, your inventories are increasing, which means that when inventories go up, your cash goes down. So you do 133. And now when you make a total of these numbers, <clears throat> it gives you 306. This number is also our one benchmark number. <clears throat> and you call it after working capital. Then you should do three transactions. I told you that three sections now you will make. You should say interest paid, tax paid, and dividend paid. <clears throat> Please do not be confused. <clears throat> I'm teaching you from BPP book. In DVD book, they do not show dividend paid here. Like if you see Kaplan, in Kaplan, interest paid, tax paid, dividend paid, all three, they come under operating activities. This is my cash flow from operating activities, you know. So under Kaplan, if you follow, I don't follow the Kaplan book. I do not. But this thing I take from Kaplan uh, because this is something which I do in my life as well. Uh, I also do interest paid, tax paid, dividend paid, all three put under operating activities. In DVD, they don't write down here. In DVD, they will put dividend paid under financing. So just ignore it. It will not make any difference. So how much was interest paid? If we pay attention here, we made our liabilities and we said that interest paid was minus 10. Tax paid was minus 256. Okay. And dividend paid was minus 156. So these are the three numbers I'm going to use. Tax paid, interest paid, dividend paid. Is it clear? Okay. So what was uh, dividend paid was minus 156. And uh, tax paid was 256. And other was minus 256. And this is 10. And this is what we get. Huh. Negative cash flow. You will say that cash flow. Cash flow generated from operating activities. This is minus 96. If we had followed BDP, we would not have put this dividend paid here and this would have been become a positive number. Don't worry, just move on. Then you do your investing activities. And uh, let me put it like this. In investing activities, what we have, of course, you know that we purchase some assets. Uh, we would say that uh, purchase of non current assets. I'll call it PPE. Then I had some intangible. Intangibles also, we put money. So you know that these numbers we already calculated. We go back to our intangibles. We say that difference is this addition. So this is a, you purchased. So it's a negative cash flow. Similarly, you purchase this one, 192. This is also negative cash flow. So two negative cash flows you have, but then you have proceeds from okay disposal proceeds. If you remember, we sold this asset. It was given in the question that you sold a non-current asset for $110,000 here. So this cash is coming in. So we record this $110,000. And by the way, let's make it like this, that we put these numbers here. This is my cash generated from operating activities. I put it here, okay? So that we make a total. Otherwise, it will be confusing. And this, we also make a total here from these three. So this is your, okay, let's make it here. And I'll say that this is also one number I need. And these two, I will change the colors. And I'll say cash generated from investing activities. Then you have the last section, which is your cash from cash flow from financing activities. We took some issued some bonds, uh, we issued some shares, those we will use them here in your financing activities. So we say that proceeds from issue of shares. So how much are your proceeds from issue of shares? Uh, if I take you here, can you tell me how much is the proceed from issue of shares? Sorry. This is share capital and share premium. You have to take these things because this is the valuation surplus retained and we don't need. This is the area where we are getting uh, from new shares. So how much we are getting from new shares? What should I write down? 250, 50 and 50. This one also? <clears throat> I will only write down here 300. I will call it 250 plus 50. This 50 I will ignore. Why I'm ignoring this 50? 
because that is bonus issue. You never receive cash. You only subtract it from retainer. Right? So cash subtracted from here, given from here. So there is no impact on, the, on, the, on your cash flow. I mean, you just took from one account and transferred to the other. So this 50 you will not have. Yes, this you got as share capital premium. So 300 is the amount which you get from, you know, your uh, new shares. Then you have your debentures. You said that uh, issue of debentures. And how much is issue of debentures? You had 100,000. Now you had 150,000. So 50 you got from debentures. Am I clear until here? And then you made payments. If you talk about now liabilities, you had here your lease liability. Your lease liability. So you paid payments for this is also return of loan. When you are returning back the money for lease, so it looks like that you are returning your loan. So payment for lease liability. This is it must be subtracted minus 31. And now you make a total. And you do it like this. And this is 319. And let me change the color and I'll call it cash flow from financing activities. So this is the line I need. This is the line I need, and I will say that net increase, decrease cash, cash during the year. So how much cash you are getting? We'll make a total of this plus this plus this. So three things. Oh, it becomes minus 49. That's interesting. That's interesting. We'll write down our opening cash. So how much is your opening cash then? How much is your opening cash uh, under current assets? Let me drag it down. So your opening cash was 117, right? And closing cash was just 29. So if you make a total of that, it should give you the closing cash, which is not equal. So it looks like that there is some problem. I mean, this should be equal. Let me put it highlight and then I will see what is the problem. So we said that opening cash was, okay. They told you in one note, if I remember, they said that the current assets investment are government bonds and management has decided to class them as cash equivalent. So what you are going to do, you will see that your closing opening cash will be including this not 117 only, bonds also. So you have this 46 plus 117. Both numbers will be considered as your cash and cash equivalent. So cash and cash equivalent, I put 46 plus 117 here and it becomes 114. So does it make 114 here? No, it makes me on the balance sheet SOFP, what do I have? I have 143 plus 29. So is equal to 143 plus 29. The difference in our cash, which is coming in is 58. What where did we lose 58? I think we skipped something. 58. Did we talk about 58? Mm -hmm. Ankit, are you with us? Hello? Pamela, are you there? Yes, I'm there, sir. So we made some trouble with $58. Mm -hmm. uh, 58,000, actually, that's not 58. <laughs> $58,000. We made some issue because he said that cash flow from financing activity, we made a total of these things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I got these three numbers. Then I said opening cash, it was 46 plus 117. Closing is 143 plus 29. So closing should be 172. It should be 172. According to our cash flow, it is this one. So we have less cash. So there should be some cash addition, which we are ignoring. Uh, we have to go back and see what we are, where did we lose numbers? Okay. Add back depreciation, amortization. So this part is, it looks okay. Then receivable payable was very simple. Then interest paid, tax paid, dividend paid, tax paid, dividend paid. Also it looks simple. Then we made some purchase of non-current assets. Intangibles, this was okay. And disposal proceed, we got cash 110. Okay. And, uh, that should be okay. What is on the current asset otherwise? Ah, do we have some bank also? No, we don't. We only have two things, investments and cash. And do we have some liabilities on bank? Overdraft current liability of bank? No. Ah, let me save it. We did a lot of work. In any case, when you are in exam, this much of one small thing will not make much difference. One number, maybe there is some one single transaction which we have missed. So you may lose one or two marks for one uh, thing which you will find it out. So there was only one difference that we paid. We said interest paid, we put it positive, and that's why there were a $20 difference coming in. We should put it minus 10. That was a mistake. Of course, when you say interest paid, it should be minus 10, not plus 10. That was the only mistake. Otherwise, all numbers are correct. We got one, the 69, they got 69. Then you have cash at the beginning of the period, and there should be cash and cash equivalent at the end of the period. Is it understood? Okay. So that's all. Uh, it was a little long question. I mean, I decided to do long question. I mean, I didn't want to do easy ones, the short ones. Short ones you can do. If you have any questions, just send the screenshot on the group and uh, we'll try to answer. Uh, not tomorrow, but day after tomorrow, I'll try to have one more class and we'll pick up financial instrument and we'll do questions from financial instruments on Wednesday, okay? Okay.